Hello, this is Kevin Collins at day three of Cedia. We're at the THX booth with Peter Vesse. And you're gonna kind of walk us through the THX certification on some of the latest uh, products that you guys have. Right. Hi, I'm Peter Vesse. I'm with, uh, I'm the VP of Technology Operations here at THX. And a couple of the things that we're showing off here at Cedia 2011 is the 3D display from LG. This is the very first THX certified passive display using a front panel retarder, FPR. And we have a number of different specifications that we go through when we certify these products. And we feel that this LG product is performing really well. It's got really good performance, uniformity, and the 3D experience is really, really well done. You talked about FPR, a lot of our uh, uh, audience kind of knows what that means and there's you know, some brouhaha about that. When right, you guys right. When you guys are certifying stuff, it's not really for 3D. It's not really about the resolution, but it's about the three. Does it do the 3D effect and stuff like that and crosstalk? Right, right. right. Those are the main things that we look at when we're looking at 3D, from active glasses to shut to passive glasses, is really the 3D experience. So we look at the basic performance of the panel. Uniformity is really a big problem with these LEDs to make sure that it has a really nice, not just at all white, but also at black levels and gray levels in between to make sure that at all the different steps that it has good uniformity and that really helps with the picture. And for the passive LED, I think it is all about the experience and we've learned that you know it really pops out when you go into the 3D modes. Great. The uh, moving down the, the line here, you guys have uh, a, a, a two full. Yeah, this is a Teufel. This is a Teufel Cinnabar 51 THX. This is the world's first THX certified speaker bar. And we've looked at a number of different products out in the industry already that, have, that are sound bars and found that there's a few issues that we've learned where, you know, I think the performance of these speaker bars need some help. And one of those things is really low frequency extension where a lot of the speaker bars don't really go low enough and that's a big problem and we really want to ensure that the speaker bar has a good frequency response and it goes low enough but also we also go back all the way to our Ultra 2 and Select 2 programs. Ultra 2 is for a 12 foot listening dis distance, Select 2 is for 10 feet, the speaker bar falls in the 6 foot listening distance category so that's where this really fits in. We're all about reference level. This has a volume control that goes to zero dB and then at that level that's where you get the reference level that you get in the movie theater so as soon as you turn it up to zero dB at six feet away you're able to get that 85 dB plus 20 dB of headroom to really get the full output and it has to do full output without distortion so that's really really difficult to do with a, the bandwidth that it's working at so so if it's it's the logo THX speaker bar that that indicates this six foot range. Yes, that's correct. So since we have the designations for the different categories, that helps the consumer know which product will fit for their their setup. Okay, and um, is and so six foot range, and then the other part was within that six foot range, a particular frequency response, particularly in the LFE area. Exactly, exactly. And there's also very strict requirements for the the dispersion for the different the front drivers. So we'll have a really wide horizontal and vertical directivity that it needs to meet in order so that there's not just one sweet spot. You can sit on the edge of the couch and still have a really flat response and it doesn't roll off and you don't get the typical problems you get with other, other bars. So I'm just out of naivety. No. Um, if I, you know, if I, I had a flat panel yes. and I bought this speaker bar, is it that I, I wouldn't Want, need to have um, on this one is it doing surround processing cancellation so I don't need surround speakers and I don't need a subwoofer is that saying if I have this I could this could be my only speaker and my experience for my living room and it's going to sound great just with this right. or do I is it I should still get some extra components it's that this is just a great speaker bar component for my li left right and center right. I think 
THX has always been about multi-channel surround sound for the home theater. We have our 5.1, 7.1 AVRs, receivers, and preamps. This is really for the extra room that you have another panel in and you don't want to go through the process of adding extra speakers and wiring up surround speakers. This is really for the, the extra room where you have a display, but you want better sound than what you're getting on the TV. You, and you don't want to put extra components around the house. So it's really intended for smaller rooms, but this does, I mean, that's really what it's for. Yeah. So the what I was kind of driving at is uh -huh. if I if I see this and I had you know smaller room expectation, this is all I really need to get. I don't need to really be thinking about adding a subwoofer. Or right. Yeah. Exactly. You would the subwoofer would come with it, and this is really all you would need for a smaller room. We would we do have the other categories for a full fledged multi channel experience, which we always do promote and think would be a good experience as well. So this isn't trying to emulate any um, uh, timing effect to bounce off the walls and do surround sound or anything like that, right? It's just, it's mainly supposed to be center, left, right channel, and then the, the subwoofer. Right, right. It does have processing built in to do some of the virtual surround, but what we like to always have is a way to go back to reference and to flat response. So while they can, the specification doesn't exclude people from adding different processing, they can include that, but we always want to be able to give the, you guys a way to go back, flat response, make it all, don't give me any of that extra stuff, and that'll be the experience that you get. Okay, that, that helps clarify yeah, it for me good, exactly good. What, the, uh, what the logo is. So we're here looking at the uh, Panasonic Plasma, and this is the GT30? Yes, that's correct. So this is the middle of the line uh, Panasonic, Panasonic, and then the they range. have the VT30, which right. is their step They're up, the step one, and that's also a THX certified. Yes, that is correct. So what's uh, unique about the THX certification on this uh, Panasonic? Um, I think one of the main things about our THX 3D certification program is really just the amount of work that goes into testing these to really get them to where they're at, where you have a single button to go to so that you can have a really good 3D experience. When we go through the testing process, we actually have their engineers come to our office and go through the testing process with us, especially with 3D, it being so new, we have created our own special test patterns that are proprietary to us, where we can show off some of the problems that are, can really show up in some of these displays. So we're looking at a lot of different things and being able to work directly with the, the licensees engineers, they're able to go back straight to their, their engineers and send us new firmware, new code, address the problems right away, and then go from there. Great. Is When a consumer comes in and, and has this, if I had this uh, GT30 set, yes. would I be in a, would I have to say, if I was in THX mode, would I have to say, oh, I want THX 2D mode and THX 3D mode, or if I'm just in THX mode, it's for both, both 2D and 3D? So when you do get a 3D signal, you will have the option of going to THX 3D mode. So there is a THX movie mode, which is just for 2D, and then a THX 3D mode, which when you do get content that's 3D, you would put it in that mode. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Is there any other uh, features of the program that you would like to uh, talk to us about? Yeah, I think, you know, all of these active glasses 3D displays come with their own set of glasses. And if you look at them really closely, you'll see that there's there are different shades of color. And one of our really strict requirements is really getting back to that HD Rec. 709 color space, which is the HD standard that they use in the, in the studios to really get the optimum picture. When we test for 3D, we're shooting through those glasses that are coming with, those, with the panel to ensure that whatever glasses it comes with we're creating an offset that corrects the picture to go back to what the studio had in the first place. So that's a really key thing. They're not interchangeable at this point. They really have to be used with the glasses that we've certified with. So that's actually a, a very interesting point. I'm glad you brought it up for our, the, our readers and members to, to understand that, yeah. that when you guys are certifying it, it's with the glasses from that manufacturer. Absolutely. And because, you know, there's a lot of uh, third-party glasses that are coming out from the consortiums is, uh, that are coming up. So I didn't recognize that you guys were actually taking to that point. So yeah, we definitely do that and obviously this syncing issue is really critical. I mean, we do several tests just to verify that the syncing with the picture and the glass shuttering is really on point. 
Well, that's a that's a great piece of information to uh, figure out. Well, thanks, Peter. Nice great. meeting Thank with you. you. Kevin. All right.